This is what happens when you cast Obliviate on your audience. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 actors you forgot were in the Harry Potter movies. Are you serious? Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're taking a look at those actors and actresses that might have flown under the radar over the eight film installments of the famous magical franchise. Said characters must have at least played a significant role in the series, and earned themselves an acting credit to count here. Oh, are you doing magic? Let's see them. Number 10, Alfred Enoch as Dean Thomas. Ron, is that your owl? If you've watched all eight films, and chances are you have, there's no doubt that you're familiar with Dean Thomas. Often flying under the radar, it's easy to forget English actor Alfred Enoch portrayed him for all films bar one. Though he becomes a member of Dumbledore's army, and much to Ron and Harry's distaste, encounters a brief romance with Ginny, his recurring character isn't driven by heavy dialogue, making it easy to forget Enoch played the role for a long period of time. Today known for playing roles such as Wes Gibbons in the American drama series How to Get Away with Murder, there's no doubt his role as Dean Thomas really got his career rolling. And I'll just go stand over there. Number 9. Luke Youngblood as Lee Jordan Remember that enthusiastic Gryffindor student with the dreadlocks who provided the running commentary on the Gryffindor Quidditch matches? A relatively unknown actor at the time, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone marked the first feature film for Luke Youngblood. Though as the movies progressed, and his character wasn't seen, it's forgivable to forget Youngblood was once cast as a minor character in the franchise. They lead Gryffindor 90 to 30. While he later became known for standout roles, such as Magnitude on Community. Who's Magnitude? Yo, 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 pop, pop. <laughs> and sit on Gallivant, there's no denying the extra buzz of excitement his voice would add to a classic game of Hogwarts Quidditch. Another ten point to Gryffindor! Number 8, Shirley Henderson as Moaning Myrtle. I'm Moaning Myrtle. Ah, Moaning Myrtle. How could anybody forget your mopey, miserable ways? I wouldn't expect you to know me. Who would ever talk about ugly, miserable, moping, moaning Myrtle? Many moviegoers might not have realized that renowned Scottish actress Shirley Henderson was 37 years old when she first played the eternally 14-year-old ghost in Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Returning to the role as a 40-year-old in The Goblet of Fire, and again under the ghostly pigtails, large glasses, squeaky voice, and childish demeanor of Myrtle, it's easy not to recognize her in the role. The oldest actor to play a teenage Hogwarts student, Henderson nailed her portrayal of Moaning Myrtle. By capturing the character's everlasting childlike immaturity in wonder, J.K. Rowling had originally written so well into the books. Let's all throw books at Myrtle because she can't feel it. Number 7. Bill Nye as Rufus Scrimger I think we both know the answer to that question, Mr. Potter. How do you open the first of a two-part film that will conclude a beloved film franchise? Capturing the tone of a dire magical world living in fear, uncertainty, and insecurity for Lord Voldemort's imminent reign, Deathly Hallows Part 1 hits the mark perfectly with an opening close-up shot and powerful speech from Minister for Magic Rufus Scrimger, as played by English actor Bill Nye. Though known for his diverse spectrum of roles and genres throughout film, television, and theater, Nye's Scrimger character is short-lived, and thus, so was his performance. Definitely a more likable minister than Cornelius Fudge, though, don't you agree? Your ministry remains strong. Number 6. Michelle Fairley as Mrs. Granger You're forgiven if your memory didn't service the fact that Northern Irish actress Michelle Fairley took the reins as Hermione Granger's mother. After all, as Hermione heartbreakingly obliviates her parents to remove any trace of her from their memories, her screen time only lasts a matter of seconds, as her character sits alongside her husband, oblivious to what is happening around her. Yet, in addition to roles as Catelyn Stark in Game of Thrones and Ava Hessington in Suits, there's no denying that having ties to the Harry Potter world would be a pretty handy resume touch for Fairly. I haven't officially hired you yet. Number 5. David Tennant as Bartimius Barty Crouch Jr. A Scottish actor with a slew of distinguished acting chops, David Tennant's casting as the 10th Doctor in the celebrated Doctor Who series coincided with his brief role as Barty Crouch. While there's no denying playing the Doctor garnered Tennant's significant attention, compared to his cameo-like role in The Goblet of Fire, it's easy to forget he was in the film. 
Why? Considering Barty Crouch Jr. masquerades as Mad-Eye Moody through the power of Polyjuice Potion, to manipulate the Triwizard Tournament and ultimately lead Harry to Voldemort through the majority of the film, we only see his character's true physical self for a few brief moments upon his exposure and in flashbacks. <laughs> Number 4. Emma Thompson as Sybil Trelawney there's no question that the power of costuming and makeup can render any actor or actress completely unrecognizable. And of course, Emma Thompson as Sybil Trelawney is simply no exception. Together, we shall cast ourselves into the future! Taking the reins as the bumbling, bizarre, and always eccentric divination professor, her trademark thick glasses magnify her eyes, while her large bangles, shawls, and frizzy brown hair mask the elegance Thompson is renowned for. Though the character's intelligence is often questioned, it's Sybil Trelawney that prophesizes Voldemort's return and ultimately Emma Thompson that blows her portrayal out of the park. You are in grave danger. Number 3. Domal Gleeson as Bill Weasley Amongst the most lovable families throughout the Harry Potter series, the Weasleys stand behind Harry each and every step of the journey. But while Ron, Ginny, Arthur, Molly, Fred, and George Weasley may have garnered the most screen time, can you remember who charismatically portrayed the oldest Weasley sibling? Hello, Harry. Bill Weasley. It's the real-life son of Mad-Eye Moody actor Brendan Gleeson. Though today noted for performances such as Captain Andrew Henry in The Revenant, General Hux in Star Wars The Force Awakens, and Caleb in Ex Machina, it's interesting to recall his role in the Harry Potter films. Distinguished by the permanent scarring on his face, we only wish we'd seen more of Bill. Number 2. John Cleese as Nearly Headless Nick a fine career delving into both 20th and 21st century entertainment, as a celebrated writer, actor, producer, and comedian, John Cleese is no stranger to bringing iconic characters to life. After all, he's played Robin Hood, Sherlock Holmes, and the hilarious Basil Fawlty. But how about a ghost? Portraying Gryffindor's quirky house ghost nearly headless Nick, or Sir Nicholas as his character likes to be called, Cleese appeared in the minor role in the first two Harry Potter films. Though his character had a deeper backstory and depth throughout the books, many didn't recognize Cleese under the long curly hair, large ruff, and plumped pants. And of course, his transparent ghostly look. Nearly headless? How can you be nearly headless? Like this. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Lamp, please. Look sharp, Tom. Don't be caught out of bed after hours. Number 1. Robert Pattinson as Cedric Diggory Depicted in the books as the handsome Hufflepuff prefect and captain of the Quidditch team, the journey of Cedric Diggory is one filled with triumph, kindness, companionship, and tragedy. His film portrayal hit the mark perfectly, courtesy of a charming performance by then-relative newcomer Robert Pattinson. It's bizarre to think he was once the new kid on the block. As while his role as Cedric in The Goblet of Fire catapulted him into celebrity status, it was his leading role as vampire Edward Cullen throughout the Twilight franchise that solidified his name into mainstream media. I like watching you sleep. It's, um, it's kind of fascinating to me. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo and subscribe for new videos every day.